So today we're going to measure intraocular pressure using Goldman applanation. So this is probably the most accurate measuring device that we have. This is the mainstay for most ophthalmologists and you will find Goldman tonometers in slit lamps uh, in the emergency departments and in ophthalmology clinics. So first we're going to start um, by applying some topical anesthetic. And for this one, you're going to want to put in a little bit of fluorescein dye, which will help to illuminate the mires we're going to look at. I'll show you those. So you'll find these little strips that are called florets. So they have some dye impregnated on some paper. Look up for just a moment. Just dab that, and if you want to blink a few times. Now, we're going to introduce our slit lamp, and we can see that the Goldman tonometer is the device here. We can swing that into place basically, turn our light on, and we're going to select the blue light. So there's filters at the top, so we can select the blue light, make sure it's nice and bright. And Jeremy, we're going to have you look straight ahead. And if you can try not to blink, we'll bring this forward. And we can see some lines there. Next, I'm going to adjust the dial so that the inner part of these two semicircles just barely touches. Now, if your patient is blinking, you may want to help them by holding the eyelid up. But you have to be careful, because if you push hard on the eyelid, you'll notice that it adjusts, it actually pushes on the mires and causes them to distort so that the pressure rises higher. In this case, now we have too much tear in the field, and so of course the mires are quite thick and that again introduces an artifact, so we'll have to remove some of that here. So again, common fit pitfalls are compressing the eyelid, causing artificially high pressure measurements, and if the patient is not looking straight ahead, if they're looking to the side, again, that will artificially increase pressure measurements. Uh, too much or too little tear film causes thicker or thinner mires, uh, and that again causes some artifacts. So if you have just a small amount of uh, tear film, uh, no pressure on the eyelid preferably, then you should be able to get an accurate measurement when the two semicircular mires line up so that their inner edge is touching. So this is the uh, gauge for the Goldman denominator. As you turn the dial, the semicircles that you see uh, on the cornea are going to move further apart or closer together. When the inner edges of those two semicircles touch, you've kind of reached your end point. In this case, for example, the dial is reading sort of 1.6. Uh, if you multiply that by 10, the pressure here is 16. Similarly, here the pressure would be 20. If this was the end point where the two inner edges of the semicircles meet, the pressure would be 10. Okay, so we are going to learn how to do tonometry. Uh, the first thing you'll want to do is wash your hands and we're going to check the eye pressure, which means we have to touch the eye, so we're going to put some topical anesthetic in, so we'll get a little drop of that. Sorry about that. There's a Kleenex for you. Now, in most emergency departments, you're going to find a box that looks something like this. They'll have it in some of your clinics as well. It's called a tone pen. So this is probably the easiest instrument you can use to check pressure. When you open up the box, you should see something that looks like that. This is your instrument here, and then there's an extra head cover. So we're going to close that box up, and I'll show you the instrument. So these are very precise, and they cost usually a few thousand dollars, so you want to try not to drop them. So you're going to roll the little rubber tip down and pull the cardboard end off. So you can see that it should give you a nice little tight fit there. There's a black button on the tone of pen. You're going to push that to turn it on. And you should see two bars on the display. That tells you that it's ready to go. Sometimes it'll ask you to calibrate. If it does, you push the button twice, holding, holding it facing down. And then it'll pause and it'll tell you up. And then you'll turn it up and you pause. And then it'll tell you OK and you'll get the, you push the button again you'll get the two bars. So when we see the two bars, we're ready to go. And then basically, 
We're going to come in from the side here, look straight ahead, and we're just going to dab the cornea. And you'll hear some short beeps. We just repeatedly dab the cornea right in the center. And then when you hear a long beep, that means it's registered a pressure after taking multiple measurements. In this case, it reads 18. And we see a little bar at the bottom that overlies the 5% uh, indicator. That means that's 18 plus or minus 5%. They also have little spots for plus or minus 10, 20, or greater than 20%. And that gives you an indication of how reliable your measure is. Tonopen is very useful and very accurate uh, when you're measuring pressures in the normal range. Sometimes it can underestimate high pressures or overestimate low pressures. But at least it's going to tell you if they're what, relatively within the normal range. An easy way to tell if they're very high or very low is actually to use your fingers. So if the tone of pen is giving you a reading that you think doesn't make sense, then you can try using your fingers. So in this case, I'm actually going to just move right over here and come onto the side. So we'll use our two index fingers. If you can close your eyes for me, and basically we're just going to blot back and forth. Now if your patient has a very high eye pressure, it's going to feel like your knuckle. And if they have a very low eye pressure, it's going to have very little resistance. And when comparing the two eyes, you're going to be able to tell that. When you finish checking pressure, you can discard the used rubber tip. But before you put it back in the box, be sure to apply a new one, leaving the cardboard in place to protect that sensitive tip. And then you place it back in its holder.